There we go. All right. I got it up. It's on Facebook. Good Sunday. We are here for the Out Loud LGBTQ Anthology podcast. You can find us on YouTube and also on Spotify. Today, we got Jack Ball Trade in the house um, promoting his new book, their new book. I didn't ask pronouns. I apologize. Uh, he, they, she, whatever. It's all. All right. All right. Yeah. Um, we will be doing an interview and they will be featuring uh, some of their work. I'm really excited for this because I do like their poetry. Uh, this is about to be dope. My co-workers, my co-workers, wow, my co-hosts uh, had prior arrangements today. So shouts out to them. I hope that everything is well. Sorry, I'm trying to find stuff. I'm fidgeting. I do that when I'm nervous, right? Um, so Jack, tell us a little bit about yourself um, and your poetic journey here. Ooh, a little bit about myself. Um, so I'm in my early 30s. Um, my poetic journey kind of goes hand in hand with my healing journey. Um, I feel like writing has always been a part of my life. Um, maybe not always like as major of a part of my life, um, but it's always been there kind of in the background at least. Um, my, I have a younger sister who passed away um, Sorry, many, many years ago. Yeah, she, it was an infant, infant mortality um, thing. So I, I was four years old. And, you know, poetry and writings, like music to the best of my ability as, you know, an adolescent kind of was my way of coping with it years later. But um, I found that, you know, I still have to do a lot of work today because um, I I didn't get a lot of help um, early on. And I think that just the resources maybe weren't there. Like it was a different world that, um, you know, 20, 25 years ago, it was a whole different world. The resources available to parents, to children, completely different. So, um, but yeah, poetry has just been instrumental. And now I feel like I'm finally, you know, decades later, harnessing my my craft and you know um this gift and this thing that i've cultivated and learning what i'm supposed to be doing with it like for the first time like actually this week i felt like once again upgraded like i i understand why i'm here i know what i'm here to do um and so yeah i'm just super psyched uh to share some of my poetry and you know yeah <clears throat> Yeah, and I I understand that um, with the poetry, the ups and the downs of it, right? Um, currently, I'm at, you know getting ready to go on tour, and I I go from being like, yeah, I'm going on tour, people need to hear this, to should I really be going on tour? Do people need to hear what the hell I'm saying? Like, right. so I, I I totally get that. And then especially with your healing, your healing is always up and down as well too. So um, I can definitely relate to that. Um. I know that you said grief plays a lot with your uh, motivation to write uh, and using it as a ther therapeutic um, activity. Um, but here at Out Loud, right, we're talking about LGBTQ issues. Where do you feel that your your queerness uh, finds its way into your writing? Well, yeah. Um, so I feel like it comes in everywhere because grief is one of those things where, I mean, the first experience for me was the loss of my sister with grief. But there was this entire grieving process of, you know, not being able to, or like having to kind of, as I grew up, shed this dream of being in a white dress and having a man stand across from me as I learned what the world was. And then kind of, um, again, when it was like, oh, you know, gay marriage was you know spreading across the country and caught fire um and it was like oh maybe this dream can play out in some way and so you know the the ups and downs and uh you know of um of the dreams that i've had um as a queer individual i feel like that plays in um 
I've always kind of had this like weird thing with gender. So I feel like that plays in and out of certain poems. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, definitely romantically too. the entire first section of my book, um, as I was kind of saying, um, I think before the before we went live, um, my book is philosophy and ontology. So um, it works in four sections. Philo is all about love. Um, and so as a queer individual, um, you know, the, the speaker in this poem or, or in these poems is, is, you know, from my voice, a male and working through his relationship with another male and just trying to figure out, you know, like, what do, what do men do together? Um, you know, how do we love? And I feel like. You know, so it just it comes through because as a queer individual writing about my life, you know, it just has no choice but to show up on the page somehow. So I've kind of chosen some pieces that highlight um, that here. Awesome, awesome. Um, and, I, you know, I agree with you. I remember um, when the, the the ruling came down on gay marriage and my mom was alive at the time and she joked. Because it was, well, do you ever want to get married? Well, hey, gay people can get married. And then now it was, so now you can get married. When are you getting married? Right. <laughs> and I was like, ah, oh, dang it. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I don't know if you have a copy of it. I, I got to see your cover the other day at the, the debut artist uh, thing. And I got to tell you guys, the cover of uh, Jack's book is just beautiful. Um, and I'm trying to think of a way to say this. It is very mask, <laughs> but it, it, it like, it still very much defines you. You know what I mean? Like it's got the, the deer and the antler and, and it's just so yeah. like, yeah, I love it. I love it. So I actually do have a copy of it here. I don't know if I can share my screen. Uh, oh, yeah. Let me see if I can make disabled. You co-host there you go okay should be this one so this is my cover um i don't know if you can see it yeah mm -hmm. um can i zoom in there we go um yeah and i i feel like it's really interesting because i feel like something that i've been trying like within my life I've been doing is tapping into um, like more feminine energies, but I do feel like at the same time, like this does come across as like, you know, you've got the, the stag, the hooded figure seems like, a, I, I don't know, it gives to me like a little bit more ma masculine energy. Um, but still there's like, you know, the, the flower, like the flowers on the back of the, the throne here. Um, I don't know. Yeah. I, I I love it. I'm obsessed with myself yeah. here and what I what I what I had in my brain and what um Rebecca Dreskin, my cover artist, did for me. Um, thank you so much to her. So um yeah, super happy with how that turned out. Yeah, it is beautiful. I love that. Like you should definitely get your cover like for your wall, like framed for your wall. I love it. Yeah. Um uh, and you said it was Rebecca Dreskin that did it for you? Yeah. Um, let me just double check that that's her name. Oh my gosh, because I don't want to get it wrong. Yeah, Rebecca Dreskin Evans, hyphenated last name. So okay. I'm glad I checked. Cool, cool. Cool, working with artists. Um, now, you, you broke it and you broke the book into four, but as we were looking at the cover, the title was also broken into four um, Philo Safi Ontology. Right, um, which is genius in its own right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I really like that. What made you come up with that that title? I don't even know. I was <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm always living on the verge of thinking versus doing, like okay. just in my head versus in the world, and you know something that I just thought of like literally today, I was like, 
you know, building castles in the sky, but I want my kingdom kind of come on earth, you know? So it's the, the marrying of the two philosophy and ontology, everything kind of coming together. And, you know, I was like, does this make any sense? And as I pieced it together, it's, it started to come together. And as I kept working on it and I pulled poems out and I ripped things apart and I restructured and I did all of this work, I was like, this is what it's supposed to be. And now I feel like, you know, it, it makes sense. And it. I'm glad that it, I'm glad that it's intriguing or ex like interesting for people. Um, Yeah, cool. Groovy, groovy. Yes. Um, etymology is one of those things that I've always uh, been fascinating with, like where words come from and where they start. I hope I said the right word and not the one about bugs, but you know, which one? <laughs> <laughs> um, so like the, the root uh, of the words um, mm -hmm. making up the title, I, I thought was really, really uh, spectacular. But, yeah, thank you. Yeah, the cover, we, yeah, we were just talking about that. The cover is crazy. Um, now you said that the first section um, you were talking about a relationship. Is that a relationship you are still in or? It's actually a series. It? <laughs> it's a series of relationships. It's the relationship that the speaker goes through is all of my relationships. Um, like romantic relationships. It's family relationships too. That plays into it. Although those poems won't really be coming through today. Um, but it's, uh, well, not from the philo section at least um but it's um yeah and, and i mean kind of the catalyst for me doing this book um i got out of a relationship it was a really difficult thing and i felt like i had to i really had to do something for me in a big way like when you lose someone who means the world to you when you lose an entire vision of your future, you have no choice but to take what little you have left and start to build again. And that's what this book was for me. Um, I've been so emotional today. So if I start crying, I, you know, I apologize. I'm not actually sorry, but like. <laughs> Here, don't be, don't be sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Do you know someone named Nick? Uh, They're just trying to get in the room. Oh yeah, Nick Honorati, yes. Okay. Let him in. All right. <laughs> so um, as a poet and as I know you don't just do poetry, uh, I feel like I heard you say that you did other writing as well. Um, what has been your, who has been your biggest inspirations as far as poetry goes? Like, who do you look up to? Who do you read? I read everything that I can get my grubby mitts on. Everything. Um but, you know, I try to, you know, I just try to get as much out there as I can. So um, some of the artists that I really love, Sylvia Plath, um, Emily Dickinson, there are, Emily Dickinson comes through a lot in this book, actually. There are a few, there's one poem um, in particular that she has that starts, my life had stood a loaded gun in coroners. Um, and that line resonates throughout this poem because it's one that has resonated throughout my life. You know, it's like her imagery, the way that she like work weaves like natural uh, elements into her work, but it's also like very humanistic and like, I, I don't know. I love it. Um, I have this book by who is it? Gwendolyn Brooks that I've been working through little by little. Um, some of her poems, so concise, but so like nutrient rich, like so. Uh, and then, you know, other writers, um, Du Bois, very influential in my life. Um, Baldwin. Um, I, I don't know. Um, I read a lot of um, Walt Whitman and throw like there's all different flavors from all different time periods i feel like you know just i love it all i hear you i hear you i i always say 
that what makes a good writer is how much they read. Like if you don't read, there you know, there's no improvement in what you're writing. Um, that's also like my tip for people who are coming up to just read, read as much as you can. Um, so I, I appreciate that. That being said, if you had a chance to talk to little Jack or the other little Jacks out there in the world, what what is the message that you would give to them coming up to be a writer? I think it would be, you know, to be a writer is not maybe an easy thing, not for all. You know, because it's to it's to walk in two worlds at once. It's to walk in the world of your shadow and it's to walk in the world of your light at the same time. And to find a way to marry the beauty and the pain and to to turn it all into something, you know, true. Um and and the way that you have like the only way that i found to do it is to spend a lot of time with self and to spend a lot of time writing and writing and writing like i've written myself over and over and over again i have so many i am poems and none of them are quite right and i'm still gonna write more um and i think that that's something that's so incredible about being a queer individual like we're given this space to kind of define ourselves again um or or just to define ourselves like i think that being a queer a queer individual the romantic path isn't written for you the way that you know it, it is for heterosexual people um or if it's a gender identity thing right then like literally the essence of who you are is is different than what people have have cast you into and so you have to redefine yourself and when you learn how to do that in all of these different areas for yourself and you do it over and over and over again and you just transform and you level up and you level up i mean the sky becomes the limit truly um so yeah go go inward okay okay um Sorry, I'm thinking here. All good. And anyone can jump in if you have questions for Jack. Um, like I said, my coworkers are my. Why do I keep calling them my coworkers? A coworker. Ew. <laughs> for the record, I don't. I don't get paid for this. We don't. We don't get paid for this. I don't know. Yeah. What is this? Like, where work comes in. Like it's so the CEO. <laughs> <laughs> I guess Marissa. You know. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, we're almost at 6 30. Um, so really we want to to hear your work. I know you said you're gonna give us a lot from the Fee Love section. Um, that's cool. But if you want to do more, you can as well. But you got 15 minutes um to share and then we'll come back and ask some more questions. Okay, hey, sweet. <laughs> okay. I also apologize. I'm like smoking here, but oh my god. Um, like coming down from being sick for a week. So um, <laughs> I'm sorry. It's like, you feel better. Here we are. Yeah. Thank you. I am feeling a lot better today. Um, it's just been a lot of rest, a lot of seclusion, a lot of like a lot of not smoking, which was really good for my brain and my body. It was a really good break for like five or six days. And then I was like, I need the nicotine. <laughs> It is what it is. We're working through it. Work in progress. So here's this first piece. Um, it's called Prayer. Let me love him. Let me do the work of loving him well. Putting myself first. For his benefit is my own. Let me wake up every morning washed in the voice I remember as I read this good morning text over and over and over. Let the memory of the days I have yet to experience be my fuel, because mornings spent with you staggered across the calendar year are not enough. But you, you, my love, are plenty. 
Uh, this next piece I got is called Treasured. And it goes like this. I fear memory will fail when I wish to hold you how I once did. His hips and spine curved differently. My face met his neck, not the middle of your back. Legs didn't twist around mine like yours do. Feet pressed against hands holding mine, fingers forced between. Yes, I worry he's warped the way I would wrap my arm around. How I curled into your chest. And then uh, this is the last poem from this below section um, that I've selected here. Um, and it's a little bit more about the family. Um, I did want to include it. All at once, backdrop drops, costumes up in flames. Makeup drips down faces, runs onto floor, up in flames. Backdrop costumes, faces I knew. The lights blinding, the performance of my life, this cast of characters, crowd of clowns, was only that. A show. What was behind, much darker than ever I could know. Surrounded by fire, fear. Darkness spotlights me, blinding, casts shadows. Nothingness all around. I grasp for familiarity, an old hand, hairy knuckled, leathery palmed, the hand of my father. The smell of my mother's hair. My brother's voice. My sister's embrace. Ah, Sishora, no resistance. Darkness fades, spotlights brighter, warmer, kinder on my eyes, as I fall upward into the love of those who loved me first, best. Before I knew what love was, I felt it for them too. They smear their faces with water, features unaffected, real, solid they stand, surround me with sound of I love you, no longer just noise, and I love them too. Um, I'm going to jump into this next poem, which is like a little bit more queer, um, and then I'll jump back in, in time a little bit. Um, so, um, as a queer person, you know, it's interesting, uh, to also have the intersectionality of being a person of color, you know, this lighting probably doesn't do me any favors here. I look pretty white, but I'm actually black as hell. So, um, well, yeah, half black as hell. Anyway, here we go. There, it, uh, this is untitled. There is a missing link between Harvey Milk and MLK. It is I, my eye seeing spaces between beautiful booming canopies, waterfalls always weeping, mushroom clouds, echo echoes of conquest, claiming territory, my derelict skies. It is I, I seeing I, yes, always saying yes. I, caretaker in need of care, taking care, taking what I need, taking what I need, taking what I need. It is I, giving my I giving through my mouth, throwing always out my mouth the truth I, I mean I see a reflection. Link between milk and MLK. It is you and me. I. I. Um, dee -dee 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 -dee. And then from there, we'll go into this next piece. Um, grappling with, you know, what it is to be a man in 2024. If I want to be a man, well, men don't quit. So when I say, I'll, I'll smoke myself to death, you don't know how to half of it. <laughs> Poison runs through my veins, inner child gagging, 
on unresolved pain. As a man, hashtag get strong, tackle wrong. What about when that wrong is me? Pummeling self mercilessly. It is working. I am changing. This must be the way to heal my wounds. Cleanse them with alcohol. I saw it on TV. To prevent infection. Sanitize. Drown it in vodka. TMZ. The germs will not survive. What if the virus is my entire mind? Who am I becoming? What am I becoming? And that's that piece. Um, I feel like I gotta delete these so that I don't accidentally read anything twice. And um, from here, we're gonna go into this longer piece. Most of my poems, as you can tell, um, you know, are pretty short. I like to keep it concise. I think that they run about one to two pages, but this one's a little bit chunkier and it just needs, it needs to be. Um, so here we go. This is a, a piece that I wrote called Down Memory Lane. Memory is a suburban street, secrets housed in silent walls, history, her story, my story, a mystery, up till now. I speak for the walls which would speak for me. 31 Memory Lane, window throws dazzling image, Christmas lights, white, Walking back home from open mic. Chest clenched, cold grips lungs, and I flash further back. Four memory lane. Asthma, choked throat. Reach for familiar leather palm, hairy knuckles. Daddy? Safety. Twas the night before, holiday tree. Seasonal allergies, centerpiece, choking. Me and Tree both, nearly dying, all alone, I not quite. Cut off from roots, like she. Fifteen months old, choking for air, no one there but pneumonia in mid of night to hold her tight, no one to spank the light back into her eyes. Six memory lane. My dad only spanked me once, I remember. The look in his eyes, daring, eye brazen. A hex on your mother, spitting curses. So much frustration behind that hand. Reaches under bed, pulls, face beat red. Pulls, safe from under feet like a rug. Gravity, compounded weight. Already incomparable force, fathers rage straight into contact with skin. Which, is, which of us wondered who would win? I stare at the barrel. It never blinks. Down it. 19 Memory Lane. Down city streets. Catch insults in teeth like bullets, spit out like pills. Hold sobs in Adam's at Big Apple. Lodged, emotions grab, chokehold. Anger ricochets off fear in my armored skin, strong through wear. Wears household staples, fag boy, playa, nigga. Like symbols could ref deflect pain with intellectualized labels. Sissy fist, romantophile, universalite. 24 Memory Lane. Rawway rallies against anti-gay rhetoric, makes no excuses, no apologies. Six memory lane, hands, leather straps, ringing for apology, that open palm on my bare ass tells me 
This is what love I have to give you now. This is the lesson you must learn of my love, that to disobey an order, to speak without thinking, to speak without thinking, to speak without thinking. 32 Memory Lane. No hands beat me now when I speak. Without thinking, they embrace me. He did his best to embrace me too. 1950 to 1960, Memory Lane. He learned this lesson from his parents. Act now, apologize never. If you show your weakness, they will see through your lies, tyrannize. So spank without thinking, spank without thinking, spank without thinking. Show them your strength, oh black man. How I miss the silent figure. 20, Memory Lane. Rocking, watching baseball. Not enough skill anymore to put into words what he needs help for. Edna Pinbottom. I reach up on the fridge. He puts a spoon into nutty mixture. His desire fulfilled at last, or mine. And just in time, before he passed. I finally got to understand him. How I miss the tiny figure, 26 memory lane, used to tower over me too, now long since turned to dust. Forgot my name like I blacked out from memories, five memory lane, leather belts across my bare ass, wooden spoons across my bare ass, 14 to 28 memory lane, anything but loving words against my bare ass, Eight and twenty-two memory lane. Those hips I never asked for against my bare ass. Are those the ones I crave now? Before memory lane. Ricocheting like bullets through his body. Lessons he transformed for me. Like he was wrung for every ounce of disobedience by his parents. The times. One to thirty-two. Memory lane. My dad only did once with his hand, many times with words, whipping my soul out of shape, my outward appearance into it. Get down, you will crack your neck, not mine to crack. Get down, you will break your arm, not mine to break. Get down, you will die like her. The game is over. The closest thing I will ever get to owning. Hanging at the top of the pine. Get down. Always a reminder. I never knew what for until. That this body is for rent only. I'm not even the lessee. Guarantor's words tower over me. Well-meaning wishes hidden at rock bottom. Every piece of advice their shine caked rhyme leaves me still to interpret in this global gulag with neither ledger, map, nor key. My father is alive, though any hope I fear at connection died with my sister. Buried in the ground will not make a sound. That connection might be a seed, though my eyes are not equipped for the length, wavelength of the light it captures, reflects. I write rules for myself now, Old ones once learned are all fucked, and I am tired of being fucked. I am tired of being beaten by my self-love. Why did I self-harm as a teen? Why do I self-harm now? What does it mean? That I cannot put my trauma down except on paper. Is this healing? I try to love myself. It comes out in warnings to look out for death, for loved ones, for yourself. How can I look at this all to see it from my side? I know now why I must look out for myself walking down memory lane. Poem. And that's what I have to share to, to share today. I think I went a little bit over time, but hopefully not much. Yeah, that last one. Oh, wow. Like even just the the way it was framed with a different 
and I'm, I'm assuming this address is memory lane uh like oh wow man give it give it up for jack man okay come off mute give it up oh you don't have to i will i will <laughs> Oh man, no that 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 was beautiful. Thank you. Um, yeah, those are beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, escape artist. Love you. <laughs> She's always hiding, little little, yeah. little little baby. Um, I took negative relationship with your father from that that poem. Is that was I correct in doing so? Not at all. He is, and he features in some other poems too. So I hope that it comes through that he is such a rock in my life. Um, okay. But you know, those transformative, ooh, sorry, I just, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> those big transformative moments, you know, it, it's something that had to come out. And I feel like I've talked to him about this poem and I've talked to him about the experience and he actually has no recollection, none. He's like, <laughs> I don't fucking know. And, you know, we talked about why it happened and this, that, and the other. And he was like, well, you know, did, did, did it ever happen again? And it was like, nope. And he was like, well, there it is. I don't know what to say. So, <laughs> but no, truly um, an outstanding father. And he did so much work. Like he, he came from, you know, he went to the army to get away from his own father. That was his relationship with his dad. So, yes. You know, <laughs> um, you know, for him to be like my best friend, my confidant, you know, my biggest role model, um, my biggest supporter. Uh, yeah, it's a lot. Um, yeah. Okay, good, good. I'm I'm glad to hear that. So I was like, oh, you know, I always get sad when uh uh people don't have that relationship. Um Bless truly. <laughs> yeah. And we all need we all need a rock best friend in our life. And it's always great when it can be uh part of our bloodline as well. Mm -hmm. Um, where where can people get a copy of your book? Um, oh yeah. So um you can get my book at www.jackvaltrades.com. That's J A C K V A L T R A D E S. Dot com jackfalltrades.com um there's a little store over there there's also a blog that i'm doing um you can follow me in my journey as i'm like heading towards the light and just trying to to remind us all of the good that we can do for ourselves and for um the people around us and it's not always just sunflowers and like roses and like all the good stuff right there are thorns and there are there's decay and there's some some of that too um but you know just remembering that it's all a part of the process um so you can follow my story you can follow uh, you can get a copy of my book there um, or you can, you know, Jack underscore Val underscore trades. So just throw um, some underscores in there. Jack underscore Val underscore trades um, on Instagram. DM me. You can get a copy of my, my copy of my book that way. Very cool. I will definitely uh, be doing that here soon. Um, is the pre-sales up already? Yeah, the pre-order is up on my website. Um, and once I get the copy of the actual um book, you know, it'll I'll remove that pre-order and you'll just be regular ordering it. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, yeah. Um, what's next for Jack? Ooh, what's next? Um <laughs> well, I do have a move coming up. I'm moving to Denver, so that's pretty exciting. Um, and I feel like it's coming what at this time when I'm, you know. I've been working on a book for a few years and I feel like I'm kind of in the final stages of, of completing it, but I feel like this shift in environment is going to help me to just churn up a lot of stuff as I kind of go through and type it out a second time because I typed it, I type, I've been typewriting and like journaling out the story. So I'm going to have to go back and like type it out into a computer document, um, and as I am going through that process already, like things are changing and it's it's one of these things where um, just like the poetry book, it is very fluid and it is very invigorating to be in. And um, I'm excited for that. So um, book of fiction coming out 
whenever I finish it and whenever I get that published. Um, I have plans for at least one more book of poetry, maybe another uh, soon. I write some music stuff. Um, you can check out the links in my profile on Instagram um, and see some of the music that I've already got out. I have like probably 15 songs that I've like written, but only two that I've like recorded and like done the legwork on, like a very little bit of the legwork on of like learning the software and stuff like that. Um, I also have a full-time job and like, you know, relationships and all the stuff that I manage with family and friends. And so, you know, like I'm one person trying to like manage my life, you know, be patient, but there's a lot going on. It's exciting. So come, come along for the journey. Here we are. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, one thing about being an indie artist, if you all in the audience do not know, is it is a lot of work. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I completely understand that answer. Um, you know, yeah, <laughs> I'm just over here trying to uh, like package books to sell, like to, to ship out that I've already sold. Um, yeah. And trying to like manage events and man yeah it's so much uh, when you're an independent artist um mm -hmm. i'm definitely gonna look up the music though because i didn't even know music was a thing but we're definitely gonna find yeah. it um, Got a couple songs <laughs> where, where is that is that on like spotify or just on your link yeah so it's um you can find it on spotify i'm jack of all trades on spotify apple music um youtube music i think that it's like garage oh, band, like all all soundcloud like it's everywhere i think so i think that you just search for me um and if you use the links in my my like bio then you can definitely find me but like you can you can find me that way um you know just by searching jack of all trades um yeah we out here making moves All 2024 right. 2024 gang gang let's go chasing dreams <laughs> for real like <laughs> chasing the light right uh, here we go right um so we're coming to the end of the podcast is there anything else maybe something that i didn't ask you about something that you you wanted to talk about anything at all ah <sighs> hmm anything at all i think that you know one of the other things that's that's just like really important i think at this juncture in our lives is to remember what we have power over and like something that i've been really tapping into is putting my bare feet in the grass sitting in the sunlight and just soaking in and remembering that like all life supports each other. I feel like there is so much chaos going on and you can see it in so many different places and it's really easy to lose track of the love, but there is this very, very strong thread of love that underpins like every, every, all human stories. Um, and sometimes it's a, like a heartbroken love and sometimes it's devastating and it comes out like it's not reciprocated and so it turns right um but if you can tap in and just remember to love yourself and give yourself that thing um and maybe it's not you know barefoot in the grass but your heart is calling for something give your heart that thing just give it to yourself you deserve it um that is my message and i think that nature is a big part of that for a lot of us absolutely <laughs> so important and it's a beautiful beautiful message beautiful message um I, I got to say that grounding technique of just walking in the grass barefoot, um, especially after the rain, guys, is it's an amazing, amazing feeling yeah. of transference yeah. uh, of energy with the earth. So I I, I second that, second that. Um, but Jack, thank you so much uh, for coming through today. If you want to put your cash app in the chat, you can. There's only a few people here, but if anybody is willing to uh, donate to Jack, send a tip, buy him a coffee or something, please do. Um, again, you can get his book at jackbeltrades.com. Um, it's an amazing collection. You guys saw the cover. Uh, it's definitely going to look nice on your shelf. So definitely go get that. Um, also this podcast is in conjunction with the out loud, uh, poetry collection, uh, LGBTQ anthology and it is a amazing collection which i'm also a part of um so if you have the chance uh redorgreenbooks.com 
and get you a copy of that as well. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, um, Jack, thank you so much for coming through. Um, it was a pleasure uh, learning a little bit yeah. about you and hearing some more of that beautiful, beautiful poetry. So thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you for the space. Thank you for all you do for the platform, for, you know, providing a a, a space for other writers to get their voices out. Um, I feel the love. Um, it was, this was much needed. Um, very, very good. Thank you. Yes, yes. Thank you. I got to find how to stop the recording. Oh, there we go. Cool.